uh, I warmly welcome our resource person, Ms. Saratanjali Manoharan. She is a Sri Lanka Administrative Service Officer working as the Deputy Director, uh, Air Resource Management and National Ozone Unit at the Ministry of Environment. She is an alumni of University of Colombo, Sri Lanka and Asian Institute of Technology, Thailand. Her research interests lie on ecological economics and archiving traditional knowledge associated with trees. And also she is passionate about conserving the environment and sharing the knowledge. So um, I warmly welcome our resource person, Ms. Saratanjali Manoharan and also all the participants. Uh, yes, um, uh, Saratanjali Manoharan, over to you. Today, I will focus more on what we should be doing as individuals to combat climate change. So, um, I will be happy if uh, the presentation uh, would be uh, interactive. So, let's see. So, most of us have heard of, or oh, like, have you ever heard of people talking these things? I have heard whether like uh, the weather or climate in Kandy now looks like how Kurunagala was 20 years ago. So Kurunagala and Kandy have different geographical features, different elevations and Kandy looks like how Kurunagala was 20 years ago. Maybe most of you would have experienced it. Some people do say that we get intense rain these days. And some would say it's very difficult to predict the raining pattern. Some would say that our groundwater level goes down every year now. That you can see with the water bottles. I'm not sure whether you have observed uh, the uh, information uh, in the water bottles. Um, so uh, when I was studying at school, I see the source of the mineral water bottles as uh, springs, natural springs. And when I came to university, I used to see the label as tube well. And now I see the labels as the source will be deep tube well. So now you understand how the water level goes down. So from spring to deep tube well, becoming the source of the water we use um, the especially, especially the bottled water we use and uh, 20 years ago this is my personal experience 20 years ago we had a beach in Vallavatta near Ramakrishna road where we used to go and play but now the sea waves have come near the railway track and we don't see the beach anymore so there is something happening within our lifetime, within decades, that indicates some other thing to us, which we pretend like we don't realize it. Right? So let's talk further about it. Touch what uh, climate change is, right? So, uh, in general, what we mean by climate change is the long-term shifts in temperatures and weather patterns, right? It can be natural, such as through the variations in the solar cycle, or else it can also be human-made, such as primarily due to burning fossil fuel like coal, oil, and gas. So, when we burn fossil fuel, we get emissions and when these emissions continue to rise as a result the earth is now about 1.1 degrees celsius so the last decade 2011 to 2020 was the warmest on the record so the climate change starts with the rising temperature and that is the beginning of the story so earth is a system where everything is connected and the changes in one area influences the changes in all the other areas. So 
as we all of us though we are like in different countries different regions all of us are connected right and climate change is something that connects us right so with the climate change now we have so many other things to consider rising temperature is not like when we we see something like rising temperature we think about 5 degrees 10 degree rising no it's not this is just like we expect by 2050 there will be like more than 1.5 degree celsius rise so 1.5 degree celsius rise means it's a huge thing for the ecosystems for the entire um, life in this earth it's a huge thing a a point uh, point 1 degree celsius rise itself makes huge changes so this climate change creates several impacts one is several effects which is hotter temperatures more severe storms increased drought a warming or rising ocean loss of species not enough food more health risk poverty and displacement all these things will be going to have climate change as their cause right and on the other hand climate change is mainly caused by mainly driven by the human activities human anthropogenic activities so so we call climate change as a global externality because this is not like not what we like we don't sow what we reap right we sow what others reap as well so this is generally called as externality when you think of externality it is it means that the consumption and production choice of a particular party affects the utility of a third party without their permission for example biggest country like china biggest countries like the countries in europe have more em emissions than sri lanka but sri lanka is experiencing the effects of the emissions released by the other countries in the form of climate change in the form of extreme weather conditions but sri lanka is not not responsible for the cause of those extreme weather conditions so this is called as global externality the another example for global externality is the plastic pollution that is not only sri lanka most of the countries used to dump plastic in the ocean and then it they travel across the ocean so even like the uh, ocean life in sri lanka will be affected by the plastic pollution of other countries they don't have boundaries even air pollution is the same like for for example for sri lanka we are vulnerable to the transboundary air pollution whereas we don't cause the air pollution we do cause but the transboundary air pollution is caused by caused beyond boundaries and then we are affected so this is the externality so climate change is one such externality and the issue is the global in presence hence an individual government cannot do anything by substantial intervening right so then for a global externality we have to we used to say that we think we need to think globally and act locally so we cannot do something individually it should be like connected we should be connected to everyone we should be acting together so the causality and implications are uncertain and unquantifiable it's very difficult to quantify the causality and the implications of climate change the uncertainty surrounding climate change creates further uncertainty about the economic change it will generate and the potential benefits of policy intervention right climate change and its impacts impacts will lead us to uh a vicious cycle of all the other economic conditions which will be very difficult for us to come out from it the consequences of climate change are extremely long term and are difficult to foresee though we predict certain things we foresee certain things it's not that easy right so now we have we have 
got an idea of what climate change is and why climate change is seen as a global externality, why we every one of us should work together and where is Sri Lanka now? Recently, a World Bank group recognized Sri Lanka as especially vulnerable to climate change impacts due to a combination of political, geographical and social factors. Okay. The changes will disproportionately impact Sri Lanka's poorest and the most marginalized communities, exacerbating poverty and inequality. Right. So climate change not only causes direct losses and damages in these sectors, but also increases other risks and disasters, including the impacts of COVID-19 pandemic. The thing is this, all these effects are interconnected, right? So if you get into one, then you will be just running around the cycle, vicious cycle of all these climate, uh, impacts, which are like mainly caused by climate change. So, as I have already said, climate change is a global externality, so the countries should come together to combat climate change. So, we had several uh, environment agreements, um, binding and non-binding to combat climate change. The key one is Kyoto Protocol and the second one, the recent one that is being active now is the Paris Agreement. Right? The key difference between Kyoto Protocol and the Paris Agreement is Kyoto Protocol was binding for developed countries and Paris Agreement is for everyone. Right, So every country should voluntarily submit their proposal in a simple language, a proposal saying how the country will cut down its emissions to achieve the climate goal. So the Paris Agreement limits the global warming to well below 2 degrees Celsius and ideally to 1.5 degrees Celsius by 2050. So it, uh, the, the proposals that are submitted by the countries are called nationally determined contributions. Right? If we do not bind to the targets, then we will have to be paying penalties. On the other hand, what we have to do is all the funds are channeled through these nationally determined contributions. Even Sri Lanka has its own nationally determined contribution. Maybe in an, when I get another chance, I would be able to tell about it further. So now let's go to the next slide. So now who is to blame? Do we blame ourselves or do we blame our neighboring countries or do we blame the developing countries? We need to see to whom we should be blaming. So climate change raises the pressure and incentives to transform economics, economies and societies, right? Because we like in the perspective of Sri Lanka, we were in an eco-friendly circular economic uh, culture and from that now we are trying to deviate to a different culture whereas countries um, there are developed countries which had uh, a, a, a culture that deviated from circular economy is turning back to circular economy so then how are we going to handle it so climate related risk including the failure of climate action is a key concern so the biggest threats to human survival and well-being worldwide is now seen as climate-related risk. So who is really to blame for climate change? It is humans, but pinning down exactly who is responsible is very tricky. We cannot pin down that Mr. X is responsible for climate change or X country, country X is responsible for climate change is not possible at all, right? So now this is everyone's mistake. So every one of us should handle it. So when we see the cause of climate change, right? the main cause is generating power. Across 86 countries, the richest 10% of the people consume around 20 times more energy than the poorest 10%. Generating power is a concern. 
manufacturing goods is a concern cutting down forest is a concern using transportation itself is a concern producing food is a concern power powering the buildings like we can have huge buildings but providing power to those buildings is also a concern and also our consumption pattern is also a concern we sometimes consume more than what is allocated for us right so that means we try to grab what is reserved for our future generation so all these things are key concerns and considered as the cause for climate change so our responsibility should be the very first and foremost responsibility should be taming our choices because being sri lankans we are in a critical um yeah we are in a critical stage whereas we have lost our original lifestyle and we are trying to grab some other um some other lifestyle of a, i mean some lifestyle of other countries whereas we are stuck because the developed countries are being switched on like um, transferring to traditional lifestyles whereas we have left our traditional lifestyles and we are trying to go for a modern lifestyle so then there is a concern for sustainability so we should always be concerned about sustainability because each and every activity of ours each and every choice of ours will have an impact on the sustainability there is a concept called avoid shift and improve and there is another concept called 5r which is refuse reduce reuse repurpose and then recycle and there is something called conserving trees and the knowledge associated with them so our responsibility as i see will be touching the first the first three concepts i have mentioned here avoid shift and improve 5r and also about conserving trees why i am thinking about conserving trees for climate change is as you have seen the climate change is due to the greenhouse gas emissions that are being released to the environment through human activities so carbon dioxide is a key concern and carbon dioxide is the measure of the global warming potential of each and every chemicals that are being released to the environment carbon dioxide of carbon dioxide is the the potential of carbon carbon dioxide to warm the globe is one right so each and every substance that is being released to the environment is um its potential is uh, referred based on the potential of the carbon dioxide so the trees play a huge role in sequestering carbon so that we can consider reducing the um, carbon dioxide in the environment by sequestering the carbon in the trees because trees intake carbon dioxide to release oxygen so that the global warming impact will be lesser than uh, no action case right so is sustainability a question or an answer it can also be a question at the same time it can be the answer to combat climate change right most of us uh, used to uh, maybe uh, i think i can uh, yeah what do you think maybe if two of us uh, if you could respond to the uh, slide it would be yeah it would be great uh, could you please tell me what do you think when you see this photograph excuse me ma'am i yes uh, i think some of them are wasting the food and uh, other than us are imaging the food um, what they want Okay. Okay. Any other person? Any other participant?
what do you think when uh, you see this? We want, yes, we want to think before waste foods. Yeah, we need to think before wasting, yes. What else? Do you think it's a common occurrence uh, in our daily life? Yes. Yes. Yes, that's true, right? So this is the first thing, first responsibility of ours to avoid wasting food, right? We would like to, when we see variety of food, we would like to um, have more in our plates, but then at the end, we won't be able to eat it. So then we have to waste it. So wasting food is not just food, not just a, a, a handful of food. It's about all about resources, right? There is, a, there is labor, there is water, there is other minerals, there is money. So then we have to rethink before wasting even a, a, a rice grain. Yeah. Right. So does anyone has experience in drinking the well water directly from the well? Anyone having experience in drinking the rain, uh, well water from the well? The groundwater from the well? Yes, yes. madam. Yes. Do you still drink? Yes. Yes, yes. yes ma'am. Okay. So most of us have had the experience in our childhood of drinking the well water directly from the well. But now most of us are scared to drink the well water. So we prefer the bottled waters. Wherever you see, now people don't just drink water. They buy the bottled water and drink. Right? So this is actually a story of two decades. Right? Two decades ago, we didn't have bottled waters. Two, two and a half decades ago, we didn't have bottled waters. And we just drank from the well. Wherever we see water, we just drink it. But now we are so much concerned, that means our water quality is getting poorer and poorer, right? So these are the things we should be considering. So what is sustainability? Sustainability is everything that we need for our survival and well-being depends either directly or indirectly on our natural environment. So it's an idea that human must interact with the environment in a way that ensures there will be enough resources left for our future generations. So each and every resource we consume, while consuming, we must think that we should also ensure that future generations will also have access to the resources we consume now. Right? So to create and maintain the conditions under which humans and nature can exist in productive harmony to support present and future generations. So this is what we need to think about it. Right? So let's think about this for a while. It's only one plastic water bottle said 8 billion people. Right? Someone is sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree long time ago. And the third quote is, going back to a simpler life is not a step forward, backward. Right? I leave these quotes to your thought so that wherever you go, you remember these three quotes. Right? So, we leave our impact on the planet, right? So we need to always think about what we do, right? For example, this is a global food print networks um, analysis, whereas if everyone in the world live like a resident of Qatar, they need 9.3 Earth. If everyone is living like the people in the United States, they need 4.9 Earth to satisfy their needs, right? You can have a look. 
So when you see this, you can understand that the developed countries or the rich countries do have consume more resources, which means we, the developing countries, consume very less resources and there is an inequity, whereas sometimes we might feel that the rich people, rich countries do consume the resources belong to us as well, right? So we, know, we need to always think about how much are we using, how much are we leaving to share with others. So the demand on nature exceeds the biosphere supply or regenerative capacity and we call it as a deficit. When an ecosystem is exploited more rapidly than it can renew itself, we call it as pressure on earth, right? So the footprint is, a it's a powerful tool for advancing sustainability and to promote you to live within one planet, right? We have, we need to always remember that we have only one planet, right? That is the theme of the World Environment Day this year. We have only one planet. With that consideration, we need to tame our choices. Right? So, let's have a look of the ecological footprint of um, Sri Lanka. Right? So, our, when you see this graph, our biocapacity is slowly reducing whereas our ecological footprint is slowly increasing. So this is the best time for us to think and later, no later than today, right? So now let's see our food practices, our food habits, right? So if you consume one tomato, the uh, virtual water behind the tomato is 13 liters and if you consume one burger then the water behind the burger is 2400 liters when you just uh, consume the burger and say you eat half and you throw the the other half that means you are wasting 1200 liters of water right so you need to see what your footprint is now there are several apps where you can track your footprint and see how you can contribute to zero the footprint, right? So as individuals, what can we do about it? The first thing I would suggest you to do is the sustainable consumption and production pattern. The cre and also the second thing is creating a sustainable lifestyle, for example, personal and our collective choices. Third is our individual actions. We can use a common sense approach. We can make it as a passion for making a difference. And also we can have a responsible living, right? So mm, these are some of the photographs were taken by me and some were downloaded from the internet. So this is a common practice we have, right? So, uh, is there anyone who would like to share a thought on these images? Anyone who would like to share a thought on these images? Am I audible? Yes, madam. Okay. Would you like to share a thought on these images? Using a lot of plastics. Yes. Actually, Are you tempted use, uh, to... Yes. Sorry? Actually, actually, we use a lot of plastics for our day-to-day -day life. And uh, most of the time, we use uh, plastic only once, at one time. Yes. Then we yes. throw it away. Yes. So, these are the things, like when we see something free in the supermarket, we are tempted to buy it, isn't it? Yes. Yes. But we have, like most of the times, what you get free doesn't last long. 
it's just so the companies what they do is they capture the human behavior are weak points and they try to sell their products that's it right sometimes you won't be able to use the container or whatever given free most of the times these containers are plastics right but then we are tend to we are tempted to buy them right so sometimes let's say if i am buying a noodles usually i consume let's let's imagine that i consume two packets a month right but when i go to the supermarket they might be selling 10 noodles packet with a gift right with a small discount so now i am tempted to buy that because i want the gift right but then sometimes the gift may not be useful to me but i still i wanted to buy because it's free right we still have that mentality which we should be very cautious when deciding or when making our choices and also when you see the sanitizers what we do we just buy the sanitizer bottle and then when it is finished we just throw it and buy another one we most of us may not sometimes think about refilling it right like maybe we can have it in a larger can and we re we can refill and use it most of us don't do right and when we go to supermarkets we usually wear, like i lived in a uh, in an era where the plastics were banned right i was living in northern province and during war the plastic was banned you, you, we don't get plastic bags anything so when we go to shop we used to carry our own bags but now when i see people what they do is they don't take anything when they go for shopping and then every every uh, consumable every grocery they buy will be given in polythene bags and then they will carry a bunch of polythene bags when they come back home right this this photo was taken in vallavatta beach where is we are like very convenient using the small uh, pet bottles for water for drinks for ice creams everything right so these are the things which we create like there are producers who produce it but as consumers we make choices which is unsustainable we just drink within minutes we drink and we just throw it right within minutes a waste of plastic is uh, being added to the environment which is harmful so we should always think about alternatives we should always rethink before making choices uh, we should ensure that our choices are environmentally smart yes so please think about avoiding disposables you can think about using ink pen rather than ball points and getting a refillable right use handkerchief rather than tissue paper towels tissue and paper towels avoid using disposable stirrers individually packaged sugar milk and cream use a spoon for stirring and place a sugar and milk in reusable containers or jars avoid using individual sachets of ch chili mayonnaise ketchup sauce whatever so the sauce in a reusable bottles dispensers instead avoid gift wrapping put the gift in a reusable bag right all these things which i don't want to read because you all can read it try your best to avoid disposables the first thing we should do is to avoid when making choices we should think that whether this is required for us or not right then we can make choices if you really need it you can buy it i will i will never say that you shouldn't be buying it but before buying i want you to be very conscious on making choices so this is what the politics is right what we have is um, sachet packets and then recently we have banned the sachet packets and then what happened this sort of a package came right so we should always like being consumers we have the right to reject right when we reject when the products don't sell then the producer will have some alternatives so when we try to create demands the producer will not come and come forward to go for an alternative so it's in the hands of ourselves to see how we can demand for an eco friendly ecologically sustainable 
products. Right? And the second thing we Sri Lankans do is the food waste, the waste of food we make, right? We, we should always think of shopping smartly. We need to take only what we can eat, right? It doesn't matter if you get hungry after having lunch, after having a meal, you can have it again, but don't think of wasting even a drop of a curry. And aim for smaller portions. We are greedy, we are anxious, and we get larger portions, and then we try to waste it, right? And also store food correctly. The other mistake we do is, we just store the leftovers in the fridge, and that with the, the leftovers will be in the fridge for two weeks, and then we take it out, and they will be spoiled, and we just throw it. So then we use a lot more resources than throwing the food before, right? So always ensure the food is stored correctly and also you take the exact quantity you need. Always learn to preserve, have ways to preserve them. Don't be a perfectionist, right? Keep your fridge clutter free. The second thing, most of our fridges will be full of food. And sometimes we forget after keeping them after two three weeks we just forget and then after two three months we take even cleaning the fridge we take out and throw them so these things we should be avoiding so when it comes to processed foods they consume a lot of resources than the raw food so you should always think about avoiding processed foods minimizing your needs for processed food right always think of reduce your waste when you eat fruits Right? Don't just throw the seeds. Just try to plant the seeds and there will be a tree growing. If you don't have the capacity to keep the trees, just share it with someone. Don't just put the, uh, for the seeds in the bin. Right? And the, this is the second thing which I would always like to share with you. This is, uh, is there anyone to share a thought? Is there is any, anyone to share the thought on this picture? Finally, bear with me. Is there anyone? Uh, who is willing to share a thought on this picture? Wasting food, drinks, and uh, using plastic is unsustainability. Okay. Yes, very good. So when I go to meetings, when I go to programs, so when I leave the hall, I used to just observe what is happening, right? So when we don't want to have them, we should avoid then and there. We should say no to it, right? Otherwise, what will happen? They will keep it and then we will not drink the tea and then after the tea will be just thrown out, right? When you don't, like when you are given short eats and if you don't want it, just refuse it there so that it can be used by someone else rather than wasting it, right? And also, so the, when we get water bottles, the pet bottles, the bottled water, what we do is we have a sip and then we just keep in the chair and we just leave. So this is one thing is the pet bottle, the plastic, and the other thing is water. Water is highly precious. As I have said before, we have started in spring water and now we have ended up in deep tube well. I don't know what would be the next. So we should always think of preserving water. Always carry your own water bottle wherever you can. You can refill it. Try avoid using the pet bottle and the bottled water. Yeah, and our lifestyles, right? So we would like to uh, have our accessories and clothes uh, to the fashion 
to the present fashion and when the fashion is gone most of us don't reuse it right there are people who use uh, clothes for like decades but then what i see mostly is people don't reuse it right when buying we try to buy the exact size and when we put on a little weight we won't be able to use the cloth so these things i don't i don't recommend you to um stop doing all these things but i want you to be very conscious in what you do right when you buy clothes try to buy the size next to your size and you can all take and use right so when you put an extra weight it doesn't matter you can still use the clothes and think of clothes where the fashion doesn't uh, move fast so that you can use it for long if you don't use an any cloth don't just throw it just share it with someone who will be using all what we have to do is it's not only applicable for the clothing but also for other accessories and other consumptions other consumables whereas you need to always think about the lifetime of the product sometimes we need to compromise the lifetime of the products with the value of it right you need to choose the optimal the product with optimal benefit whereas you have the cost is affordable to you as well as the lifetime it has longer lifetime than before right usually like when you buy slippers mainly we buy slippers for like 1000 rupees and they last for 2 months sometimes when you buy a slipper for 1500 it might last for 1 year so you have to decide it so ensure that you don't throw anything after you try to reuse it try to repurpose it to use it again and again or else if you don't want to use it share it with me right the transport choices we have right so when you see the when the urban population in developing countries increase the world car population also increases right it is the same situation as in sri lanka so transport usually enable access to jobs education healthcare services markets improves the quality of life assist to lift people out of poverty all these things happen but transport also means to traffic accidents air pollution negative impacts on global economy transport and also the contribution to climate change and if we don't have transport we will not be able to eradicate poverty so it's it's very difficult situation for us to have choices and in the context of sri lanka it's very difficult because we don't have an efficient public transport system so we have no choice than opting to um private transport systems but then that lead to road accidents um climate change air pollution and everything but still i want you to think responsibility i mean responsibly because like simple choices maybe for 1 km we don't need to go in a car we don't need to go in a motorbike we can use bicycle or we can just walk right so you need to make smart choices when it comes to transport right so when we think of sustainable transport it should be universal access to clean safe healthy and affordable transport for everyone right so when you make transport choices when you drive a car ensure that your car is full right most of the times when i see cars i see only one person driving the car which makes the traffic much heavier than before right so ensure that you have more people in the car or else if you have access to efficient public transport systems i don't mind you using public transport systems or else try using eco friendly transport systems right so you can have you can avoid transport like <clears throat> in case if you can meet online you don't need to go and meet you don't need to drive for 2 hours and meet if you have other modes of transport so you first you need to think of avoiding certain things second you need to, you need to think about how you can shift your existing un, uh, un eco friendly transport modes and the third thing is how you can improve 
your transport modes to ensure sustainability right and the third thing i would like to talk about is the importance of trees why we need trees as i have already said trees are needed to remove carbon dioxide right so we have higher deforest we have deforestation in sri lanka which is uh, the global forest watch data shows how deforestation happens in sri lanka right and sri lanka as you uh you might be aware of it sri lanka is one of the 16 biodiversity hotspots across the world sri lanka together with the western ghats of india is one biodiversity hotspot in sri lanka especially the singaraja forest is seen as the biodiversity hotspot biodiversity hot, hotspot means it it has high endemism and also it has higher threats right so sri lanka being an island it has high endemism it has many endemic uh, flora and fauna at the same time when it comes to trees trees usually sequest more carbon than other plants but still native trees have their own features because people depend usually depend on native trees to enrich their lives the services the products customs ceremonies and rituals everything is associated with the native trees the users have intertwined with the culture and climatic regions right we might not have thought about it previously just have a thought have a like just close your eyes and just imagine the places of your village places of the name even in the cities the places of uh, towns you have will definitely somehow link to a tree most of the times the all the old names will be linked to a tree right at the same time your cultural rituals your traditional medicine practices even the present lifestyle will have trees behind so just have a thought and see how important these native trees are and also these trees native trees compared to the introduced trees have increased resilience to disturbances in the ecosystems when it comes to introduced trees trees that are being introduced by humans uh, over centuries even before century for example teak is an introduced tree to sri lanka both tree is an introduced tree but it has later naturalized rubber is an introduced tree and now we we tell that rubber is naturalized in sri lanka right but then it's an introduced tree so these introduced the native trees have more resilience to disturbances in the ecosystem compared to the introduced trees they do not require frequent irrigation fertilization pesticide treatments of low cost higher pest and disease resistance and also facilitate diversity and richness because trees have evolved with the human trees are like far older than the human um, civilization they have settled so they have a different ecosystem they have species depended on them so that they are very resilient right many native trees are seen as keystone species what keystone species is keystone is when in an arch the uh, stone in the center is called the keystone whereas when you remove the stone the entire arch will collapse similarly in species there is uh, there are keystone species whereas if anything happens to the keystone species the entire ecosystem entire food chain will start collapsing right because there will be many species depended on the keystone species so their use and the ecosystem services provided by them cannot be fully replaced or replicated by human interventions trees are like amazing form of life in the earth so that we cannot being humans we think we are the masters of everything but we cannot replicate the functions that are being the services that are being provided by the trees right so we need to conserve trees why we need to conserve trees first thing is to protect the trees from the threats if we don't have trees then slowly we will have to vanish from the earth 
So we need to protect them. Like though it is seen as a selfish thought, we need to protect them from th threats because then we need them. And also to tackle their rarity and endemism. We need to conserve the trees because when trees are rare, there is a high chance for them to die. So we need to protect them to, uh, because endemic trees means that trees um, that naturally exist in specific region only. If it is endemic to Sri Lanka, then we can say the tree naturally exists in naturally or naturally occur in Sri Lanka only. So if it dies in Sri Lanka and there is less chance for it to occur somewhere else. So we need to protect them. And also trees have the solution to world's intractable problems. Even all the climate change solutions will end up with trees. To ensure the sustainability of ecosystem services they provide. Trees provide different ecosystem services which you can search and find out. So all these uh, to protect the services from clean water to soil to uh, absorbing pollutants. Trees do a massive service to the um, earth. So then we need to ensure that the uh, ecosystem services are continuous and also to conserve genes. The genetic material in trees are used in several human inventions, including medicines. So we need to conserve the genes, otherwise we won't be able to have medicines because 75% of the Western medicine have the base from the trees. To ensure the benefit sharing and control of exploitative practices. We need to conserve the trees to ensure that nobody exploits it. We can, maybe we can discuss it later. So to protect the indigenous people, culture and practices. So trees have a knowledge that is not written elsewhere, but being passed on to generations and generations. So that knowledge needed to be protect, protected. To protect that knowledge, you, you want, we need the tree to be existing so we need to conserve them and there is something called plant blindness because all the most of the trees are green it's very difficult for us to differentiate so what happens we don't sometimes care about trees because everything looks green so that is called as plant blindness and also for bio prospecting there are many things to learn from the trees so that we need to take care of the trees and also trees are a part of the earth part of this uh, species in the earth and it's an obligation for uh, for the humans being the uh, species in the higher level to ensure that they don't get extinct as i have already told you uh, trees and the traditional knowledge associated with them are two sides of the same coin right so when the trees die, the traditional knowledge will die. When the traditional knowledge die, the trees will die. So it's, it's necessary for us to think about it, record the traditional knowledge, document them to ensure the protection, sustainable use and management together with the access and benefit share. So this is what generally happened to trees all, of, all over the country whereas we cut trees for several purposes and we don't care about it right so with a few stories i i try to finish my presentation so when i had field visits this was one story told by an uh, an old person he was around 80 years old so there were days we were solely dependent on soap nuts from the tree Sapindus trifoliatus to wash our clothes. With the ban on bringing it to the province, we had to travel 40 miles by bicycle to the town to buy one soap bar, which costs almost half of our daily wages those days. The younger generation doesn't know about it and the seats are, di are a disturbance now, so people just burn it. But when you just search the literature, soap nut powder is very good antibacterial and antifungal agent. It is mostly used in the cosmetic and contraceptive creams. It is also used as detergent, biosurfactant, and remedial for organic soil pollution in the modern science. So uh, when you check on Amazon, you will have a detergent powder made of these seed balls. Whereas in the northern province of Sri Lanka, now the seed balls are, I mean, the 
uh, soap nuts are just being burnt because they are of no use. Right? So this is a story of three generations actually. When we were schooling, we fought for palmera fruits. We used to wait eagerly for the fruits to fall along the path to school. The competition for the fruit was very high. We also collected seeds, planted them in the special beds created and waited for the exact time to get the tuber. Now I'm 83 years old. Still, I plant the seeds and get the tuber. I hope this will be the last time I do it. My sons still expect me to plant seeds, get tuber, boil and serve it to them. If I do so, they will happily eat and enjoy it. My grandchildren won't even touch it. Palmera is a tree uh, that cannot be cut. Female palmera tree cannot be cut in Sri Lanka. We cannot fell them because they contribute to the food security of the country. But the present state is this. This is actually a story of three generations. Right? So the, this is the third seed. During uh, this is called Ingini in Singhala and uh, Strychnus potatorum is its uh, botanical name. So during the days when we go for hunting in the forest, we used to take the seeds and the clay pot. The water will be muddy due to the movement of animals. We just rub the seeds in the inner part of the clay pot and take the muddy water. Within minutes, it will be clear and then we drink it. In traditional system of medicine, the seeds are used for the treatment of various ailments like jaundice, bronchitis, diabetes, and all the other diseases. They are also used to clear muddy water by its coagulant action. So, what I have mentioned is, these are the traditional knowledge associated with the products of each tree. Which, which is not in the books, which is not in the researches, which are not proved scientifically, but being practiced by our forefathers, our grandfathers, and being transferred to generations. When these trees die, the knowledge itself dies. When the knowledge dies, <coughs> people don't know about the trees, so they just, it will lead to the dying of the trees, right? So, we need to think for a minute. We don't need to invent solutions. Instead, I think we discover solutions. Every drop counts our decisions today impact the well-being of our future generation. So it's time for us to think and make environmentally smart choices. Thank you. Dean, Faculty of Indigenous and Social Sciences and Management Studies for the deliverance of the vote of thank. Uh, Madam, over to you. Okay, right. So thank you. Uh, Ms. Saratanjali for joining us this evening to deliver this webinar on a very interesting but also very timely and important topic. Um, as a very newly established faculty, we initiated this webinar series to inspire not only our academics but students um, to broaden their intellectual horizons but also to engage critically in some of these current debates, uh, discussions and topics. So I think uh, we saw something like this, uh, that today. Um, and uh, you have delivered an excellent presentation to fulfill exactly this, um, along with some uh, giving us some very practical advice in becoming responsible uh, and environmental friendly uh, and conscious in our day to day life. So thank you again for your time and effort. And I do hope we can work very closely with you in the future in exploring and in researching some of these critical topics. Uh, these are very um, crucial and timely topics that we need to uh, uh, inform our students as well as our academics about efforts and let's work together in future as well. And finally, thank you Chintani uh, and the Department of Indigenous Social Sciences for arranging this, um, yet, arranging a yet another very successful webinar in the series. Thank you uh, for, for the students who have joined, uh, other faculty members. Thank you very much.